you all already know uh, that the retinoblastoma is the most frequent uh, primary ocular malignancy in children, and that the cure and survival is close to the, uh, uh, of this uh, uh, disease is quite complex. As uh, uh, it can be a conservative or not a conservative approach. Um, As you all know, enucleation is still a valid option for the most advanced retinoblastoma, and sometimes adjuvant chemotherapy is needed according to the pathology risk factors. Uh, Dr. Shields already gave a very beautiful overview of uh, possible chemotherapy treatments, especially using intravenous chemotherapy, which were the standard of care since 20 years. They give a good long term control, but unfortunately there were failures that occurred in the most advanced cases. That's why at the beginning of the, two year, the years 2000, there, were, there was a strong need for even more effective therapies that could be associated possibly to less side effects, ocular or general. So selective ophthalmic artery chemotherapy or intraarterial chemotherapy was one of the options that was possible that the technique improved and developed at that time. The real initial results were very interesting, but at the same time, many questions arose in number of uh, the drugs used, the doses, the number of procedures, but also the toxicity, either ocular or general, and the impact on survival and on visual function. That's why uh, we uh, went on uh, this technique and uh, uh, Rafael will uh, um, do a brief sh short history of the technique for you and then describe how we do in Paris. Thanks. Um, so uh, effectively, he, he, everything started in Japan because uh, culturally uh, there was a, a, a very difficult um, a lot of difficulties in the tolerance to uh, enucleation. So first uh, tests were uh, performed to inject directly inside the carotid artery using uh, a balloon to occlude the uh, carotid artery and inject the drug uh, in the ophthalmic artery. With the development of the techniques with new microcatheters, small tubes that are able to, to navigate directly in the ostium of the arteries, we were able in the uh, uh, beginning of 2008 to super selectively inject uh, the chemotherapy directly inside the ophthalmic artery. So this is called the selective, selective technique of injection. It was um, presented first with the Dr. Abramson uh, and Dr. Pierre Gobin uh, team. The goal, uh, as have been previously uh, said, is to uh, decrease the rate of enucleation and lower the global toxicity of IV chemotherapy. And uh, maybe also decrease secondary neoplasm or uh, uh, limit the risk of metastatic uh, uh, disease. So we started our uh, first procedure in 2009, and um, um, it took it took uh, uh, it took us some some time to get really confident with those small babies and specific techniques and navigation. To now uh, uh, perform this technique routinely, and we were discussing with Mrs. Shields that in the beginning. Also, in their experience, it took a lot of hours to, to be ready to, to treat the patients. But now it's, it has become much more routine, and we have gained a lot of experience, both in the uh, technique for injection, but also in the global management of the patients um, in our operating room. Also, we have been, uh, together with Curie, uh, developing a prospective randomized control trial, and uh, Dr. Lumbroso will present the result of this trial. Um, a lot uh, of um, 
importance has to be dedicated to the planning of the treatment and the preparation um, of the baby um, because uh, preparation is extremely important. The access, the arterial access, femoral access, or now in some cases, radial access, still remains very tiny in those uh, little kids. So we have to be um, uh, uh, very precise in the puncture of the uh, arteries to get access. Also, navigation uh, in those kids is quite easy, but the cannulation, the selective cannulation of the ophthalmic artery um, might be uh, tricky. We have uh, 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 then to uh, find ourselves in a uh, perfect position so the drug is delivered uh, inside the ophthalmic artery. And also the dosage of the uh, drug is important. And we will repeat the cure mostly around three times with an interval of one month uh, in between each session. So this is a carotid artery. Uh, the nose is in uh, the right of the artery. And you can see the navigation here of a very tiny wire and a microcatheter that get inside the ophthalmic artery. This is the supraselective injection of the ophthalmic artery. And you have the choroidal blush that is a surrogate marker for some diffusion of the drug inside the uh, central retinal artery, which is the main feeder of the, the tumor. So we, we never see, uh, because it's so tiny, the, the retinal, central retinal artery, it's very rare to be able to see it, but we take this uh, choroidal blush as a surrogate, we are in a correct position. In some instances, we cannot directly access the ophthalmic artery and we have to navigate through alternative routes. And mostly this route is the middle meningeal artery, which is a branch of the external carotid artery. And through this, collateral circulation, we are able to opacify the choroidal uh, blush and the globe, and we are able to inject the chemotherapy supraselectively. This is um, a schematic drawing. You have multiple collaterals that allows us to access to the ophthalmic the central retinal artery, but it's collateral pathways and we have to to, to manage this in the rate of infusion and the, the, the dose of the drug. Also sometimes cannulation of the ostium of the ophthalmic artery because the specific angulation or bending is not possible from the carotid artery and we have to navigate the circle of Willis and go from the basilar artery that is more posterior through the communicating artery up to the uh, ophthalmic artery. Uh, one of the specific management uh, I discuss is the preparation and planning of the, the treatment because um, during the procedure, some complications might happen. Most of them, and the most important of them is bronchospasm. When you have the cannulation of the ostium of the artery, it can sometimes uh, trigger a specific reaction with a severe bronchospasm and a, a huge desaturation of the, of the patient. So this might be prevented uh, through a, a correct anesthesiologic management. Then we might also face problem at the access. And we will uh, also discuss uh, the post-operative risks uh, of, co uh, of complications that in some instance still need to be evaluated. This is, as I mentioned, the most frequent bronchospasm. You have to be aware of that when you start your practice. And it can be prevented. Um, and we have uh, published on that with our colleagues anesthesiologists, can be prevented by a, a strong management of, um, uh, of the um, uh, anesthetic and the depth of the anesthesiology that can prevent. Complication also at the approach. This is a publication from the group of Mrs. Shields and Pascal Jabour is the interventional radiologist, a neuroradiologist there. So we have to be very uh, cautious when we puncture arteries uh, and to, to lower the, the loss, potential loss of, of blood. Finally, um, 
catheterization, as you can see, we are at the ostium. And at some point, we, we might have some leakage of the drug outside of the ophthalmic artery. This has no uh, uh, risk of complication on the brain, uh, but it's something we uh, particularly scrutinized in order not to happen. Livia, I will uh, uh, now leave you um, the, the, the speech. Yes. Um, so uh, we do uh, intraarterial chemotherapy since 2009, but uh, in, in order to answer to all the questions we already mentioned before, we did design a phase two prospective non-randomized trial for this treatment for first line treatment. And the objective was eye preservation uh, superior to the historic uh, data of children treated with IV chemo. So the secondary objectives were complications and the measurements of the DAP. Um, the inclusion criteria were patients aged from six months to three years with no prior treatment with unilateral groups B, C, or D. Uh, we, uh, on purpose, uh, decided not to treat bilateral cases because at that time uh, there the were beginning of description of severe ischemic complication after this procedure, and we were concerned about the visual function. Of course, we seek the consent of parents and tutor, and we excluded group EIs. So uh, the, the procedure is the one that uh, Raphael described. We used in that protocol one drug, which is melphalan. All patients are evaluated in ophthalmologic ocular department here in Curie and the intraarterial procedures done in Fondation Rothschild. The doses chosen was 0.4 milligram per kilo, which is quite classic. We never exceed five per injections for one to six course maximum. And we add local ocular therapy from the second or first, after the first or second, according to the tumor volume. So uh, we include in, in that uh, study 39 patients prospectively and 36 could be treated. Two uh, patients could not be uh, catheterized and one patient could not be treated because at the moment of the diagnosis, he presented with a, a contribution to general anesthesia. He couldn't be uh, treated by uh, intraarterial. Median age is quite classic for RB and they received a median number of cycles of four. Uh, of four. Median follow-up is now of more of five years and the majority of patients also re received the uh, eye treatment. We had to stop the treatment uh, in five patients. In one child, she's presented with a very severe reaction during the procedure. So we decided not to uh, continue with this uh, treatment and two for ocular complications. At the end of the follow-up, the survival is excellent with all children alive and well, and ocular preservation at five years on the 36 treated is 69%. This is the Kaplan-Meier curve. When you look, and this is a case that fares well uh, with a nicely uh, regressed RB, but the problem is the vision with, because the lesion is posterior. So, um, at 18 months, 74% uh, of children had their eye preserved, including the three eyes that were considered failures. And when we look at the 36, nearly 80% were uh, preserved. The relapses were observed for a few children and many of them uh, led to a nucleation. We decided never to treat these children with external beam radiation. Eye preservation according to IRC classification was excellent for the uh, B and C groups, less good for the D groups as uh, we could expect with 53%, which is better than the IV uh, rates. So what is the tolerance and side effects? We had no real severe uh, neurologic uh, accidents in that series. Systemic, we observed a few cases of neutropenia, but never aplasia and never need of transfusion. We did observe ocular side effects, most of them not severe, even uh, with eyelid pericular edema. Uh, we observed two very complete and severe ptosis and two cases of severe retinal ischemia. 
as a late uh, side effects, we also see uh, some iris atrophy, some of massive choroidal atrophies, retinal detachments, and intravitreous hemorrhage. So here is a case of this patient that presents with a regressed retinoblastoma with but a completely uh, atrophic fundus and no vision. So uh, this ocular vasculopathy or retinal ischemia was uh, seen uh, in five patients on uh, 36. Uh, the risk factors are not very well known. Uh, we speak about ophthalmic artery diameter. Uh, what is the physiopathology? Is it an endothelial lesion uh, with the catheter? Uh, is it a toxic effect on the endothelium of the vessels? Uh, can be a precipitation, we do not exactly know. Uh, but uh, the results are comparable uh, to the other series in terms of ocular complication that could potentially threaten vision, such as retinal and choroidal ischemia. So uh, there are still many unknowns on the long term. What is the visual function? What is the radiation-related toxicity? We should know that our DRP uh, shows doses that are below toxic levels, but uh, these children uh, are very young, so it's possibly characterogenic. Uh, what is the impact of uh, uh, this uh, shift of trend of treatment on metastatic disease? We uh, hopefully and uh, did not observe none in this series, but uh, the fact that they do not have IV uh, chemo uh, could lead to the lack of control of potential metastatic disease. So we uh, begin to uh, observe that uh, series relate metastatic events. So it is important to select your patients and not to treat uh, conservatively uh, to advanced cases. What is the impact on secondary neoplasm? We do not really know. The series of, uh, Jap from Japan shows a cumulative incidence of nearly 6%, but these patients were treated heavily and also received external beam or systemic chemo. So in conclusion, uh, in our experience, uh, the selective ophthalmic artery chemotherapy with all, only melphalan is an effective and safe first-line treatment for selected cases of RB. It does allow a better eye preservation even in more advanced groups, but ischemic complications are possible, so late visual function is not necessarily good. Is it possible to further improve the eye preservation? Well, we uh, will try. We are now uh, uh, on um, doing ongoing a trial or a prospective randomized trial using melphalon alone versus melphalon and topotecan to see if adding the topotecan will improve this result. It is important not to forget that the threshold between enucleation and conservative treatment is constantly evolving and that more and more children are treated conservatively, but unfortunately some metastatic deaths begin to be described. So you ne always need to always evaluate the balance between the benefits and risk from the treatment burden versus the results. Never forget that these technique needs multiple procedures, multiple general anesthesia, and, some, and sometimes will lead to a non-functional eye. So it is important not to forget that increasing the eye preservation is important, but with maintaining the excellent vital prognosis that we observe in the uh, Occidental countries. Thank you. And it's important also to acknowledge all the group uh, of Institut Curie et Fondation Rothschild. This is a disease that needs a multidisciplinary approach. Thanks to everybody.